Every day you wake up in the morning, stretch out, and go about your day without giving much thought to the intricacies of your own body. After all, why would you? But did you know that in the world of anatomy, there's a specific way we address the body? It's not just some arbitrary convention, it's a vital language that ensures medical professionals worldwide are on the same page when it comes to discussing our bodies. Today, we are going to take a look at some of the fundamentals of anatomy and physiology by looking at anatomical position and directional terminology. Don't worry if that sounds foreign to you. I am going to break it down in a way that you can understand. Hi, I'm Dr. Vanessa, and this is my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. Before we start today's video, I want to take a minute and ask for your support. If you are finding value in these easy to understand biological videos and want to ensure that they keep coming your way, I encourage you to become a part of our community by hitting that subscribe button. Your support fuels this channel's mission to make biological concepts engaging and easy to understand. Thank you for being a crucial part of our scientific journey together. Before we really delve into today's topic, let's take a look at what is anatomy and physiology. Anatomy is the study of the structure and organization of living organisms, while physiology is the study of how those structures work. Scientists and healthcare providers have a common language when they're referring to different parts of the body. And though it may seem confusing at first, this language allows them to be very specific and communicate clearly with one another. When anatomists or medical professionals refer to the body, they always refer to the body in what is called anatomical position. And this is basically a standard reference position. And when we talk about the body, different body parts in relation to one another, etc., we always refer to it in anatomical position. So this gives a reference point, a starting point of how the body should be positioned when we're talking about the body. So anatomical position involves the individual standing straight, looking forward, feet are flat on the floor, shoulder width apart, and the toes are also forward. The upper limbs are at the sides with the palms facing forward. So that's anatomical position. And whenever we refer to the body, we're referring to the body in anatomical position. So it's important to understand what anatomical position is, and then to also understand that whenever we're referring to the body or using these directional terms we're going to talk about, that we are referring to the body in anatomical position. So what are directional terms? Directional terms are used to describe the relative location of different body parts. It is very important to understand, though, that directional terms only make sense when they describe the position of one structure in relation to another. Let's look at directional terms and what they mean. The term anterior means towards the front of the body. Since we are standing up straight in anatomical position, looking forward, um, anterior is also the ventral or the belly portion of the body as well. So we refer to the front of the body as anterior. The term posterior refers to the back of the body. The back of the body in humans, since we are standing up, is also the dorsal or the back portion. So we have dorsal and ventral in humans, but they are also referred to as anterior being the front of the body, posterior being the back. Ventral is referring to the belly portion and dorsal is referring to the back portion. Um, so anterior would be towards the front and then posterior towards the back. That's pretty straightforward um, for those terms. The next set of terms that we'll look at are superior and inferior. Superior refers to towards the top of the body or above. The term inferior refers to um, the bottom of the body or 
below. And we're going to use these in sentences in a bit so that you can understand this a little bit better. So superior is towards the top or above, inferior is towards the bottom or below. The next set of terms that we're going to look at are medial and lateral. The term medial means towards the midline of the body. And the term lateral means away from the midline of the body or out towards the sides of the body. So medial is towards the midline, lateral would be away from the midline. The next set of terms that we'll look at are proximal and distal. So we use these specific set of terms when we're talking about the limbs of the body, so the arms and the legs. So proximal means closer to the point of attachment. Um, so it depends on whether we're talking about an arm or a leg where that point of attachment to the body is. And then distal would be further away from that point of attachment. So proximal is closer to the point of attachment. Distal is further away from the point of attachment. The last set of terms that we'll look at are superficial and deep. Now, these terms refer to how close something is to the surface of the skin. So superficial is very close to the surface of the skin. So it's closer to the surface of the skin. And then the term deep would be further down away from the skin. Okay, so superficial would be closer to the surface of the skin. Deep would be further down underneath the skin. Now, we defined what those terms mean, but they really start to make more sense when we use them appropriately. And in order to use them appropriately, we have to use these terms um, for one body part in relation to another body part. So let's look at some sentences and try to see if you can fill in the blank with the terms that we just learned. A uh, little bit of tips for using directional terms uh, when we're using medial and lateral they all have to be on the same plane. For example, when we're talking about the nose and the ears or the lungs and the heart. And if we're using anterior or posterior, remember that front towards the front of the body, towards the back of the body, they need to actually be directly in front or behind each other. So sometimes we get into an instance where maybe we could use anterior or posterior or maybe superior or inferior. We have to figure out which one is going to work best in relation to one another. I always like to tell my students, think about if you're trying to explain what the body looks like to somebody who can't see. And you have to use this directional terminology in a way that allows them to put the organs and the body parts where they're supposed to be. So if we're talking about things like the heart and the lungs that are on the same plane, we need to think about what directional terminology would be appropriate for that. If they're not on the same plane, then we need to think about what directional terminology would be appropriate for that. So think about those things as we go through the next set of sentences and see if you can figure out what word should be used in the blank before I tell you. The spine is blank to the heart. Think about this and see if you can find which directional term is appropriate. Did you say posterior? The spine is posterior to the heart. Why did I choose this answer? This answer is the most correct because the spine lies closer to the back of the body than the heart does. And it's the most appropriate way to explain where these are in relation to one another. So the spine is posterior to the heart. Let's try another one. The head is blank to the feet. Go ahead and see if you can figure out what directional term goes in that blank. Did you say superior? The head is superior to the feet. This is the most appropriate term to describe this relationship that the head is above the feet. Let's try another. Try this one. The nose is blank to the ears. Do you know what directional term is appropriate to fill in the blank with? 
Did you say medial? Well, then you're getting it. The nose is medial to the ears. Why is this appropriate? Because they are all on the same plane. And a good way to describe this is that the nose is medial to the ears, meaning the nose is closer to the midsection of the body than the ears are. If we flipped that, we could say that the ears are lateral to the nose. So for this case, the nose is medial to the ears. It's in right in line, right in the middle. Um, and like I said, if we decided to flip that, we could actually say that the ears are lateral to the nose. So when we're using these terms medial and lateral, they all need to be on the same plane. Let's try another. Go ahead and try this one. The fingers are blank to the wrist. What directional term would be appropriate to fill in this sentence? Did you say distal? The fingers are distal to the wrist. Why did I put this answer in the blank? Because the fingers are further away from the point of attachment, which would be the shoulder area. The fingers are further away than the wrist is. So the fingers are distal to the wrist. The wrist is closer to the point of attachment of the body, so we could actually say, if we flipped it, that the wrist is proximal to the fingers because they are closer to the point at which the arm attaches to the body. Hopefully by now you're getting it, but we are going to try just one more. Try this one. The muscle is blank to the skin. What word would you use to fill in this blank? Deep. Deep appropriately explains the relationship between the muscle and the skin. So the muscle is deep to the skin. It lies underneath the skin. If we flipped it, we could say that the skin is superficial to the muscle because the skin lies on top of the muscle. Hopefully this helped to explain these a little bit better. If you think about how you need to use these terms in relationship with one another, um, and that also we have to think about them being on the same plane if we're going to use terms like medial and lateral. This should help make it a bit easier for you to understand how to use this directional terminology and be able to use it appropriately and correctly. Thank you so much for watching my video. If this helped you learn directional terminology and how to use it, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, let me know that in the comments below. If there's a topic that you are dying to hear about that, let me know that also in the comments below. Thank you for hanging out with me. And if you do like my content, again, make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you never miss out on a new video.